As a hen gathers her brood, so Christ will gather you. As a wise one counsels her friend, so the Spirit will counsel you. The Trinity of love will be with you. As the mother comforts her child, so God will comfort you. As a hen gathers her brood, so Christ will gather you. As a wise one counsels her friend, so the Spirit will counsel you. The Trinity of love will be with you. The Trinity of love will be with you. Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's a little chilly, but we're going to uh, give praise to God uh, today no matter what and uh, give thanks for the beauty of this earth, for the chance to fellowship together the chance to receive God's love and grace. In the name of God, who guides us through the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage, amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted our promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you. And all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Knowing 
beloved of God, called to be saints, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. what is not ours, and for hearts that are not rest with ourselves. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships, and for unwillingness to see the image of God in our and others. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Psalms. We'll read responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When, when evil doers close in, in against, against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes, foes and, and my enemies, enemies will stumble and fall. fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One, one thing, thing I, I ask, ask of, of the Lord, Lord one, one thing, thing I, I seek, that, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and, and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter Hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me high upon a rock. Even, Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary, sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. Subject me not to the will of my foes, for they rise up against me, false witnesses breathing violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. All right, if any of my young friends are with me today, perhaps you can give me a honk of the horn to let me know that you're here. All right, we have at least a few of us here, so great to have you here this morning. 
So we're going to start with a little game, and I'm going to ask everybody present to play along. It's a game that you might have played before. It's called Simon Says. Do I need to explain the rules? Maybe. All right, if, if, Simon, if I say Simon Says and I tell you to do something, you're supposed to do it. But if I don't say Simon Says, you don't do it. All right, let's, let's try this. So Simon Says, tap your feet on the floor. All right, Simon Says, stop. Are you all doing this too, choir? All right, I'm watching you, Kevin. <laughs> all right, Simon says, touch the ceiling of your car above you. All right, Simon says, stop. All right, Simon says, wave to your neighbors in the cars nearby. All right, stop. Oh, I didn't say Simon says. <laughs> all right, Simon says, stop. All right, Simon says, flash your headlights. All right, Simon says, stop. All right, Simon says, squirt your windshield once. All right, honk your horn. Oh, <laughs> Simon didn't say it. Okay, well, very good. Well, thank you all for playing along with me for Simon Says. Simon Says, stop anything that you're still doing that I didn't tell you to stop. <laughs> so. Well, we are in the season of Lent. And one of the things about the season of Lent is that we are supposed to turn to Jesus and follow him, that he is the model for us, the way that, the way that Christ lives and what he proclaims. That's what we are supposed to do as well. So it's a lot like Simon says, but it's Jesus says, and we follow along. And so I want to just share that with you, that uh, the season is one thing uh, for us, or it's a reminder for us, to turn to Jesus, to remember uh, the, what he taught, and uh, to follow him always. And uh, the gospel lesson that we're about to read is one of the best lessons uh, that we could have for this, because I won't give it away right now, but uh, it's a lesson about how much Christ loves us. And so as Christ is our model, and during Lent, as a season that we really try to focus in on how Christ is our model, remember that that model is how much Christ loves us. And so the way that we um, uh, use that in our lives, the way that we imitate Christ in doing that, is by loving others around us. So I hope you remember that, that just like Simon says, whatever Jesus says, we strive to do in our lives. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. May he be the model for my life, that the love that he shows me, I may return to him and to my neighbor. Amen. All right, thank you all so much for joining me. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. They came for his protection. The Pharisees in today's story do not want Jesus to be harmed by King Herod. 
And you may be asking yourself, weren't the Pharisees antagonistic toward Jesus? And sadly, that is how Christians often have been taught to view this relationship between Jesus and the Pharisees, but that isn't rooted in reality. We are discussing this in detail in our Lenten study of the book, Jesus' First Century Rabbi. The invitation to attend that class and that discussion remains open to you. But in a nutshell, though, and for today's purposes, let me just say this. Jesus was himself a part of the Pharisaic tradition. Do the Gospels de depict squabbles between him and the other Pharisees? Yes, but that is how Pharisees worked out theology. Those arguments should be expected by us. There are other stories in the Gospels that tell us how Jesus frequently was invited into the Pharisees' homes for meals. And today we have this story of some Pharisees whose intent is to warn Jesus about a threat. They aim to protect him from King Herod, who is fully in line with the Roman Empire and who is quick to crush any threat to his power or Roman power. Jesus replies to their warning with a monologue that begins, Go and tell that fox, in reference to Herod. Jesus probably never expected this response to reach Herod, though. That's in part due to the Pharisees not having any affiliation with Herod, but also because the people who would benefit the most from Jesus' response is not Herod and his court, but you and me, the readers of Luke's gospel. When Jesus refers to himself as a hen, he didn't desire for Herod to ponder its significance. He wanted you and I to ponder it. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Is that the best animal metaphor Jesus could have used? A hen seems so small and ordinary. <laughs> they aren't very threatening. They aren't considered powerful, agile, or even smart. So why then did Jesus use this metaphor of a hen? Well, even though hens do not embody the characteristics that humanity typically places on a pedestal, hens do embody one characteristic arguably better than any other animal. It is a characteristic that humanity doesn't always strive for, but it is something that we need. Hens are extremely maternalistic. Hens do not hesitate when it comes to matters of protecting their offspring. A hen makes sure that all her chicks are fed. In bad weather, a hen will direct her chicks to shelter. And if shelter is not to be found, she will spread her wings to become their shelter from the storm. If a hen picks up a hint of danger, the mother hen will call out to the chicks and, obeying her call, they will rush to her for protection. Perhaps foremost of all, if a, pred if a predator is in their midst, say like a fox, the mother hen is known to draw that threat away from the chicks, even at the expense of sacrificing herself in order for her chicks to survive. It is that kind of maternal instinct, instinct, of love and protection that Jesus desires to offer. Jesus began his reply by referring to King Herod as a fox. All that Jesus had to do was stay out of Jerusalem to avoid this fox entirely. But instead, Jesus went there. Why? Because like a mother hen, Jesus would not put his own safety and welfare before our own. His desire is for humanity 
to experience life in its wholeness, that we may have lives directed by the law of love, a love shared with God and a love that is shared with neighbor. That is the kingdom that he offers. Like a mother hen, Jesus went to that fox knowing that the cost of it would be his own life. Jesus went knowing full well the slaughter that would occur when he faced down that fox. And he went knowing that it would allow you and I to live. Jesus would never leave humanity to the whims of the rulers of this world's kingdoms, often characterized by authoritarians like Herod and Caesar. However, authoritarians aren't the only foxes that threaten to keep people from experiencing the wholeness of life that God intends for us all. Authoritarians derive their power from ideas and worldviews that are based on fears and on hatreds, racism, xenophobia, anti-Semitism, misogyny, homophobia and transphobia, harassment, bullying, and sadly, the list goes on. These are ideas and viewpoints that, just like a fox, they seek to devour us. They do so by dividing us, by, dehuman, by dehumanizing others, and by serving as excuses for not loving, loving our neighbor fully. They deny God's will by seeking to spread distrust, suspicion, and fear. Jesus desires to be the hen who gathers her brood under her wings to protect them from the foxes of all stripes. His desire is to be the hen that shows us to be, shows us to a better way of life, a way of life that is characterized by love of God and love of neighbor. His desire is to offer protection, to enter the fight himself, to ensure our safety by being the one who is killed by the fox. And somehow that death is mysteriously the protection that we need. That is the good news of God, packaged in the metaphor of a hen and her chicks. It is not glamorous. It is not an image that showcases God's strength and God's might. It is simply an image of a hen who unconditionally loves her chicks so much that she will gladly offer herself over to the clutches of a fox in order to guarantee her chicks protection. It is the Im image of a hen who wants the best for us all and she wants the best for her chicks, that they may have the fullness of life that God desires for them. It may be a simple image, but we are hard-pressed to find a better metaphor to describe Christ's dedication and faithfulness to us. The sheltering wings of Jesus are always open to you. That is the plain and the simple good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah.
and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar, and with love everlasting you beseech me. In every moment of life or death you are. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you have known its meaning through and through. You are with me beyond my understanding. God of my present, my past, and future, too. <laughs> Although your Spirit is upon me, still I search for shelter from your light. There is nowhere on earth I can escape you. Yet in the darkness is radiant in your sight. <clears throat> For you created me and shaped me, gave me life within my mother's womb. For the wonder of who I am, I pray. Safe in your hands, all creation is made new. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. <clears throat> you gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news even in the face of opposition and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Bring an end to war and be present with all the people suffering from the violence in Ukraine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You hear us when we cry to you. Attend to those expecting a child and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic st stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving, especially Jim, Jim. Carolyn, Carolyn, Grace, Grace. Lynn, Lynn, Marie, Marie. Norm, Norm, Irma, Irma. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Megan, Megan. Stephen, Stephen, Candy, Candy. Chuck, 
Claire. Claire. Janice. Janice. Pete. Pete. And those we name before you now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation at All Saints. <clears throat> Empower faith formation ministries, Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generations. Bless our adult education groups, especially our Thursday morning group and our Lenten book study. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You send mentors and leaders to nurture the future generations with core values of courage, confidence, leadership, character, and entrepreneurship. Bless the Girl Scout troops who meet regularly at All Saints. Troop 609, 957, 3306, and 3312 and use our shared relationship for the benefit of the whole community. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share with one another a sign of God's peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the, fa for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. Thanks be to God. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Amen. All right, our announcements this morning are brief. Um, today is Girl Scout Sunday. And I know that we have um, a few from, I believe it's our troop uh, 3306. And so you all want to give us a wave? I know you're over there. <laughs> yes, let's welcome them. <laughs> we, have a, we have a few other troops that also meet here at All Saints. And how about now, if anyone in your car has been um, involved in Girl Scouts at all, you give a honk of the horn. Uh, very good. All right. Well, thank you uh, to all the Girl Scouts uh, and all that you do in our community and for us here at All Saints, and we're glad to celebrate you today. It's a little chilly, so we're just going to stay in our cars this morning, if that's okay. <laughs> so let us now receive our charge and sending blessing. You are children of God anointed with the oil of gladness, and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Till we meet. 
meet again. By good counsel's guide aboard you, with a shepherd's care and fold you, God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Holy wings securely hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you, put unfailing arms around you. God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet. Till we meet again. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.